The Last of Us is all anybody can talk about right now with their wild fungus monsters. And my mom is currently obsessed with watching Pedro Pascal fight them along the countryside. And cordyceps are a real threat if you're an insect. But what exactly, you may be asking, do cordyceps or fungus at all have to do with dinosaur extinction? Well, I'm glad you ask, because I'm here to tell you. And it's a, it's a story that starts 65 million years ago. So let's get started. So one of the major theories behind the mammal takeover after the dinosaur extinction has to do with fungus. We've all heard the story. Meteor comes, strikes Earth, fires, dust clouds, extinction, dinosaurs dead, right? Well, that's not necessarily the whole story. So after the dinosaurs were extinct, the planet was still very messed up with dust clouds and cold temperatures and dampness everywhere. Sounds like a perfect place for a mushroom and you'll be right. And there was a power vacuum amongst the land animals. There were no major large bodied animals left after the meteor. So it was reptile versus mammal who was gonna take over the land. And reptiles were primed to do so because they are really great at not needing a lot of food. They reproduce really fast. They have a lot of offspring in a relatively short amount of time. And mammals are a little bit different, right? They have higher body temperatures, which means they need to eat all the time. And they reproduce slower. They, they often only have a couple offspring every so often. And that leads them at a disadvantage when there's a massive upheaval in the ecosystem. So it was primed for reptiles, but we remember it was dark and moist, wet and gross and mushroom central. And the reptiles were really susceptible to infections from funguses. They were often able to get rid of them when the sun was out because they could heat themselves and kill the infection. But without the sun, they can't sun themselves to get rid of it. So they would not survive these infections while mammals could fight off the fungal infections because they have a higher body temperature. Funguses don't do well above 85, 86 degrees. Their proteins start to denature and they fall apart. So mammals were the winners. Woohoo! They can survive past this great fungal filter as it's called. And we now have the diversity of mammals we have today, including humans, which in the long run, maybe aren't so good for the environment. I don't know if you heard this, but the planet is warming and these funguses, like yeast especially, are becoming more heat tolerant. Generation by generation can withstand hotter and hotter temperatures, slowly inching up to 98.6. And other bad news, human body temperature is lowering. In more developed countries, our body temperature is decreasing. So slowly that gap is shrinking and humans are becoming more susceptible to fungus infections, especially with yeasts. So it's not mind controlling cordyceps mushroom, but it is no good. Just to reiterate again, we really are in no danger of the cordyceps making the leap from insects to humans. It's really boring, but still serious fungal infections that we have to worry about as they become more heat tolerant. Uh, but that's all for now. Let us know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you would do in a zombie apocalypse and stay safe out there and stay curious. We are in no danger of cordyceps making the leap to humans anytime soon. That will be millions of years in the future, if anything, if we're still here. <laughs>